key word in Proverbs 4 and 23 that we're going to deal with on this morning is the heart. Now, it's important for us to understand Solomon is not talking about the muscle or the organ, the heart. When he talks about the heart, the heart has to do, young people, with our will. When I say I will do something and I won't do something, we're talking about the heart of a person. Our feelings, our choices, our perception and character. All of these words are synonymous with the heart of a man. If you are always a happy person, that says that you are a person that has a merry heart. Always down, sad, that, that, that could say about you, you, you have an anxious or depressed heart. Our heart, again, has to do with our feelings, our choices, our perception, our character and such. Not, not necessarily the organ, but what we choose to do reveals our, our heart. How many are understanding thus far? All right. Let's look at a few things on what the Bible says about the heart before we deal with our, our text. Because I want you to understand, again, what the Bible teaches about the heart. Let's start in Proverbs 3, and let's go to a very familiar verse, verse number 5. Again, we're getting ready to look at a few things about the heart. Y'all with me? All right, Proverbs 3. Just turn one chapter and look at verse 5. And notice what Solomon reveals here in this verse. He says, trust in the Lord, help me out, with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Remember I told you the heart has to do with our perception. So the world will teach you, follow your heart. But here Solomon said, no, don't lean to your, your heart. Don't lean to your own under, understanding. When it comes to our heart, we must trust the Lord with all of our heart. In the Bible, this is a powerful verse because the Lord is the only one we should trust with all our heart. Nobody else. You love your parents, but you can't trust your parents with all your heart. Mm -mm. You love your pastor and may have a good pastor, but you can't trust your pastor with all your heart. You have friends, you enjoy the internet, but we don't need to trust these sources with all of our heart. Even when you fall in love, and it's not lust, and it's real love, you still don't love that person with all your heart. I love my wife. I love my boys. But not with, not with all. No, that, that all is reserved for the, for the Lord. Yeah. And notice, he says, trust. You have to put, and I, you and I have to put our total confidence in the Lord. Total confidence. See, people will let you down. Your pastor will let you, you down. I may tell you, I'm going to call you on Wednesday, but it may not be till Saturday. You're like, dog, pastor, what happened? Man, some stuff happened. I let you I let you down. But you know who will never let us down? The Lord. Never. That's why we can put all of our trust in, in him. How many understand? And the way that we can trust the Lord or have faith in him, it takes us hearing the word. The only way we're going to really trust the Lord with all of our heart, you have to hear the the word faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of 
God, you got to have an anointed sent preacher to teach you how to trust the Lord. How will they believe except they, they hear? We got to hear a word. That's why young folk got to make sure they come to church. Thank God for YouTube. Thank God for the podcast. But God designed us to come to his house to hear the word of God proclaimed from his sent preach. And if I hear that word and I do it, it's going to help me to trust the Lord with all of my all of my heart. Let's go to Proverbs 28. Okay, starting real basic. Proverbs 3 tells us about the heart. We should trust who? The Lord. With what? All of our heart. Now notice Proverbs 28. And notice verse 26. Y'all still with me? All right, hold on. Proverbs 28, 26. Now, we got a choice. Either we're going to trust in the Lord with all of our heart or not. And notice what he says in this verse if we choose not to. Proverbs 28 and 6. He said, he who trusts in his own heart is a fool. Let's read that again. He who trusts in his own heart is a fool. It's stupid. Crazy. You know why? Because the fool has said in his heart, there is no, no God. Yeah, I heard what Elder League said about giving. But I don't believe that. Well, I'm going to do it this way. Well, according to this verse, a person that thinks like that is a, is a fool. Yeah, I know I need to get saved, but I got time. I'm still young. I'm going to live a little bit. I want to try a little bit of something. I want to do a little something. Well, a person that's like that, according to this verse, is a, is a fool. There was a man in scripture who had a whole bunch of money. He said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to build myself some barns, and I'm going to go store up my stuff. Then I'm going to go party. I'm going to eat, drink, and be, and be merry. And the Lord looked at him and said, you fool. Tonight, your soul is required of, of you. See, whenever we get to trusting in our own heart, we messing, messing up. You can be talented, but if you're just trusting your talent, you're a fool. Because your talent will only get you so, so far. You can have a little money, but if you're trusting your money and make decisions based upon the money that you have, according to this verse, you are a, a fool. I don't want to be a fool. Fools die for lack of wisdom. I want y'all to notice Genesis 8. Just write this, Genesis 8, 21. Y'all look at it with me right here. And look at why we don't need to trust our heart. Y'all ready? Now this right here, step on my toes. Y'all ready? Notice this, Genesis 8, 21. And the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Notice, although the imaginations of man's heart is evil from his youth. See, we don't need to trust our heart because our heart is, is evil. Our heart is evil. Bad intentions, bad imaginations, or evil imaginations are in our, in our heart. And notice he says, since we was a youth. Isn't that amazing? So we don't need to trust our own well, why did you do that? Because I was feeling, oh, so you was led by your heart. Well, why did you do that? Because I felt, no, we don't need to be making choices based upon our feelings or our heart. We need to be led by the, the Spirit of the Lord. How many are understanding by a show of hands? You don't choose friends based upon your heart. You don't quit a job based upon your heart. 
You don't go get a job based upon your, your heart. You shouldn't even go and select a church based upon your heart. Well, I like this church. They got such and such and such and such. But is God leading you to that, to that church? Because every church is not God's house. We should not trust in our own heart. Why? That's what a fool does. Mark 12. Mark 12. Last thing I want you to see before we deal with our text. So let's see if you're with me. When it comes to the heart, we should trust who? The Lord. Well, how much of our heart? All of our heart. But if we trust in our own heart, we are what? We are fools. Mark 12, and notice verse, verse 30. Y'all mighty quiet. We all been guilty. Y'all ever trusted your own heart, your own feelings? Well, you know, they said on the news, don't do such and such, so I'm not going to do it. No, you don't do that. We shouldn't trust in our own heart. Again, Mark 12 and verse 30. And this is Jesus teaching about the heart. And you shall love the Lord. Your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Finish it strong. This is the first commandment. So when it comes to our God, young folk, we need to love him with all of our the first commandment. Love the Lord your God, young folk, grown folk, with all your heart. When you praise them, praise them with all your heart. When you sing to them, sing to them with all your, with all your heart. When you live for Jesus, live for them with all your, your heart. Love in the text has to do with our, our commitment. It has to do with being committed to God in such a way where we don't let anyone separate us from the love of Christ. No matter what you go through, Lord, I love you. I done messed up, but I love you so much. Lord, I fall to my face. I bow my head. I repent. I ask for your forgiveness. I'm turning, and I'm getting up because I love you. Even though I messed up, Lord, I'm still moving forward with you. I love you with all my heart. God, I'm going through in my mind. I'm going through in my body. But I'm going to give you the praise. Because if there's anybody that deserves all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, it's you. Now, my back is hurting, Lord. I can't move like I normally move. But ain't nothing wrong with my mouth, Lord. I'm going to open up my mouth and shout unto you. Ain't nothing wrong with my hands, Lord. I can at least wave my hands because I love you with all my heart. I'm committed to you, Lord. I'm committed to you. I'm not going to let anything separate me from your love. My friends be tripping, Lord. They don't want to live according to the Bible, but, Lord, I'm more committed to you than I am to my friends, and I love you with all my heart. Even though I'm not perfect, God, I still want you to know I'm committed to you. How many understand? We have to love the Lord with all our heart. And so when you consider what I've said, we need to implement these traits about the heart in our life. We need to love the Lord or trust in him with all of our heart. We need to make sure we love him with all of our heart and we don't trust in our own heart. Are you with me? Now back in our text, let's go back to Proverbs. Solomon teaches us as young men and young women, we must keep our heart. And then he says, with all diligence. Young man, you got to keep your heart with all diligence. As a leader, you have to keep your heart with all diligence. As a parent, we have to keep our heart with all diligence. As a 20-year-old, you have to help me keep your heart with all 
diligence. Then he says, why? Because out of it spring the issues of life. See, our heart can influence us on the matters of life. Yeah. You can hear what God says, you can read his word, but your heart will feel a different way. And it can influence you to do contrary to God's word. Get up and go to church, but your heart say, man, I done found this warm spot in the bed. And I just want to stay right here. So you got to keep your heart because your heart can influence you to stay right there in the bed. Out of it spring the matters or the issues of of life. And we can deal with life in a number of ways, right? We need to make sure we deal with life according to God's written and revealed word. But in order to do that, we have to keep our heart. Am I losing y'all? To keep in the text, notice, first of all, actually means to keep from conquering. We have to watch ourselves and not allow the issues or matters of life to conquer us. See, what you deal with can overwhelm you if you don't keep your heart. Parents going through some issues And you wonder, man, they going to split up. What daddy going to do? What mama going to do? And and, and you can be feeling some kind of way in your heart. And if you don't keep your heart, you can start getting mad because of what your parents are going through. You can get depressed because of what your parents are going through. So you have to keep your heart with all diligence. Don't allow what's going on in your family to conquer you. Don't allow what's going on in your family to affect your attitude. Why you mean all of a sudden? Why you wearing all black all of a sudden? Why you don't want to talk all of a sudden? What's going on? Stuff attacking that heart. It's conquering you. And so you have, to, you have to shake yourself and say, I'm not going to allow this to get the best of me. I got to keep my heart. I'm not going to be one of these young girls that's just mad at me in my whole life. Just bitter because I had a bad example at home. Well, if you're going to be like that, you got to keep your heart. Well, something happened to you sexually. Somebody did something to you. You wish it wouldn't have happened, but you got to keep your heart so you can still have the proper outlook about yourself and about sex. Yeah, because some young people, unfortunately, they go through different things and they allow what happened to them to define them. But you keep your heart and that thing won't conquer you. Yeah, things not going your way. And you can get mad and start doing whatever. But you can prevent that if you keep your, keep your heart. Am I painting a good pitch? But to keep also means to guard or protect. We as young men and young women have to guard our heart. You got to protect your heart. You don't give your heart to everybody. You have to protect your heart. You don't tell everybody how you feel about them. You have to protect your heart. You don't vent everything about yourself to everybody. You have to guard your have to guard your heart. Because there are some people, young folk, time you open up your heart to them, Instead of trying to be a comfort, they will actually try to murder you. And maybe not kill you naturally, but James talked about how people can murder with their tongue. 
time you open up your heart, folk can say things to just cripple you. Have you looking at yourself in a negative way? Have you feeling about yourself in a negative or demonic way? You have to guard your heart. You have to watch it when, when, you, when you got certain things going on in your life and you want to talk to somebody, young folk. You have to be careful about who you say stuff like this to. Can I talk to you? I, I want to talk to you, but, but you can't tell. No, you better be careful. You finna open up a part of your heart. You finna open yourself up the way you can possibly do more harm than good. When people are pulling on you, come on, talk to me. Tell me something. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I know you play ball. I know you make it, but, but tell me some more. <laughs> you better put a fence around your heart. Be careful. I'm not telling you to not be friendly, but you have to be careful. You have to be careful. I'm not telling you my favorite color right now. Why? They'll try to win you over by getting you things. That's your favorite, your favorite color. I saw this jacket and it was your favorite color and I just thought about you. Uh, no. Don't even go there. Guard your, guard your heart. There are some guys, if you get to telling them about certain things in your life as a young man, you'll find out if they really for you or against you. You know, guys will be talking. They'll be on the game talking. Yeah, man, she fine. Hey, man, let me ask you something. Man, you ever did it before? You ever had something before? And they be talking, yeah, man, I hit that before. Yeah, man, I done done it three times before. Well, what about you? And when they get to you, you whether you have or haven't, when you guard your heart, you be like, hey, man, that's personal right there. No, oh, we don't hear that. Tell it, tell it. No, that's personal right there. You ain't got to tell them if you have, and you ain't got to tell them if you haven't. You guard your, you guard your, boy, that's some good teaching right there. That's some good teaching. Because if you tell them your heart, every little joke will be about what you have done or what you have not done. Man, ain't she fine? Hey, you ought to hit that. Oh, never mind. I forgot. You ain't never done that before. Every little joke, <laughs> it'll be about you. And then you'll start feeling like, well, maybe I need to get them to stop talking about me. I need to go ahead and get me some. And then the first time you do it, something bad happens. First time. Man, I only had sex one time and I already got me a baby. <laughs> the first time on that dumb stuff. And it's with somebody that you can't even stand. You can't even stand the person. But you just thought they were cute. But now you tied to the person you can't stand for the rest of your life. And it all started because you did not guard your heart. You didn't guard your heart. You have to guard your heart, young folk. Notice, with all diligence, with all diligence, young folk, you have to take the matters of the heart seriously. Guard your feelings. Guard your emotions. Guard your choices. All of these have to do with the So in my close, I want to spend the next few minutes helping us with some ways to guard our heart. Because I've, I've, I've messed up before. And I've seen young folk mess up, and I've seen grown folk mess up. But y'all are so fortunate, you get to learn right now how to guard your heart. Now, there are a number of ways, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach just a few this morning, and then we're going to be done. Okay? All right. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes. Somebody said, where that's at? Ecclesiastes. If you're in Proverbs, just go to the next book, to the right. 
or scroll up. Okay? Ecclesiastes, verse, chapter number seven. Now, Ecclesiastes was written by the preacher. We often suggest that it was another book written by Solomon. But when you read chapter one in the first few verses, it will tell you that these are the words of the preacher. And listen, young folk, you need to heed the words of God's preacher. Y'all listening to me? Heed or listen to the words of God's preacher. God was so serious about people listening to his preacher. He said, if you believe his prophet or his preacher, you're going to prosper. Bottom line, if you do what God's preacher tell you to do, it's going to make your life better. How many young folk and young adults and grown folk that are here right now, you want your life to be better by a show of hands? Even though you may got a good life right now, how many want it to be better? Well, you need to listen to this preacher right here. Ecclesiastes 7.21. Y'all ready? Okay, here we go. This one be stepping right here. Also, do not take to heart everything people say. Y'all get church to say, preach it. Let's read that again. Also, do not take to heart everything people say, lest you hear your servant cursing you. Can I work the text? If we are going to guard our hearts, young people, we do not need to, the key word is heed everything people say. Do not take it to heart. Do not take to heart. Notice everything. Everything that people say. People will always have something to say about you. About you. You can take an hour to get dressed, coordinate your whole outfit, just left the beauty salon, just left the barbershop, got on some expensive cologne. Somebody ain't going to like it, and they're going to have something, <laughs> something to say. But remember the preacher, don't take it. Don't take it to heart. Don't take it to heart. You done had a crush on this particular person for who knows how long. You finally got up the courage to talk to the person. You finally took them out. Y'all even scheduled a little time to go to prom. Y'all pick out your outfit and so forth. And, and you happy. I mean, you happy. You, you just, man, I, I really like this person right here. But, you know, I just... <laughs> Man, we, we're just spending time together. I ain't saying we're going to get married or nothing, but I just, man, I just, I just really like this person. Is somebody that's going to have something to say? Yeah. Some going to say, man, y'all look cute together. Y'all look cute together. Some going to be like, I'm so glad you finally got with such and such. But somebody, somebody going to have something to say. You know what? She ain't all that. <laughs> Somebody going to have something to say. But remember the preacher. Don't take everything to heart. Don't be so sensitive. Don't be so sensitive when somebody says something that you don't like. It's some young folk, they break down. Time somebody get on to them about something. They just take it to the heart. What's wrong with you? Well, you have said, I mean, you just take it too, too personal. Yeah. Even if I or your parents or somebody correct you and they write, I mean, come on now. 
Don't get all out of whack. Do not listen, or I like the way he said it. Do not take to heart everything people, people say. Don't do it. Some people you don't need to listen to. Some people don't deserve your attention. They're not qualified to speak into your life. You should not let somebody that you don't even know on TV or the internet define you. You don't know them like that. So don't take it to, don't take it to heart. That's a good verse from the preacher. And that was somebody rang me this morning. Guard your heart. Well, how do I guard my heart according to this verse? Look, just don't heed everything people say. Yeah. Has anybody ever said anything to you and it stuck with you for hours? By a show of hands. I, I might as well go ahead and just ask. I've done that. What about days? Has somebody said something to you and it stuck with you longer than a week? But after the day, you're going to guard your heart. Always remember, people will have their opinion. Yeah. Now, there are some people you need to listen to. But the text is, you don't need to listen to everything. There are some people I know when they speak into my life, I'm going to take heed to what they're saying. But not everybody. Not everybody. I'm not going to listen to what everybody has to say about me. I'm going to guard my, guard my heart. All right. Let's move on. I think y'all y'all got that. Let's go to Luke 18. Now, while you turn to Luke 18, when you, when you get in the car, you get at home, and your parents get to getting on you, and they get to saying stuff, don't be like, well, Pastor said, I ain't got to listen to that. <laughs> if your parents are telling you right, you need, you need to heed them. Now, some folk, young folk got parents that talk crazy. I'm just going to be honest. You hear me? And I tell you, you, you don't have to receive that. You don't heed that. Anybody coming at me contrary to God's word? I'm not going to heed that. Luke 18 and 1. Again, we're talking about ways to guard our heart. Look what Jesus said. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to what? Pray, notice, and not lose If you are not going to give up in life, one way to guard your heart is through prayer. Jesus came to his disciples and told them, look, you got to always pray because sometimes you're going to feel faint in heart about the things you deal with in life. But if you are going to endure until the end, you got to always pray. Because I'm going to tell you how some saints do. Some saints, God can tell them to do something, and they'll do it for a while. Time they run into some opposition, they get faint-hearted and just say, forget it. I'm going to do something else. But if God didn't say do nothing else, you need to stay right there. And the way you stay right there and be steadfast is you got to pray. You got to pray. If God told you he was going to give you something and it hadn't happened for a period of time, instead of changing your mind or stop pursuing what God told you he was going to give for you, you got to pray. Lord, I feel like giving up. And you told me that I would reap a harvest if I would not faint. And I'm feeling like giving up, Lord. I'm tired of dealing with all these turndowns, these folk talking about this, I can't have that. But you told me, if I delight myself in the Lord, you give me the desires of my heart. And I feel like throwing in the towel. That's when prayer will come in and strengthen you. See, Jude said you can build up yourself 
on your most holy faith. When you feel like quitting school, when you feel like quitting a job, when you feel like quitting at being productive, when God told you to be productive, it's time for you to go in there and pray. Because if God didn't tell you to quit, why are you quitting? If God didn't tell you to stop, why are you stopping? If Goliath show up, you got to go out there and deal with Goliath. Go ahead and pray so you do not lose heart. And God wouldn't have sent me to Luke 18 and 1 if he didn't know it was somebody in here who didn't feel like giving up. You got to go back and pray. And we ain't talking about that now I lay me down to sleep prayer. I pray my soul to keep prayer. No, you got to go to that James 5 and realize that the effectual and fervent prayer of righteous men and women, it avails much. I don't know who I'm talking to in here, but you better get back to praying. Now is not the time to quit. Now is not the time to throw in the towel. You better get back on your knees and pray. Men should always pray and not faint. Let me tell you something, college student. There are going to be times in your first semester where you feel like this ain't me. But if God done told you to take your tail to school and it was going to help you to be productive, you better get in there and pray so you can complete the course that God has set you on. Sometimes, I'm telling you, it's just like that in life. You get married and you be like, Lord, did I marry the right person? <laughs> did I pick the right one? Well, you done had the wedding day. You done been to the moon. It's time for you now to go in there and make this marriage work. You better get in there and pray for you and your spouse. Because what God has put together let no man put asunder or tear apart. You got to pray. You got to pray. Look at somebody say, always pray. Y'all didn't say it like I wanted y'all to say it. Say, you got to always pray. You got to always pray. Lord, I feel like going back to the club. Lord, I feel I, I missed some things. That's when you got to pray so you don't end up back in the club. Lord, I feel like going back to my ex. Lord, they said they done got they self together. You better pray. You better pray. I'm smelling they cologne. I'm smelling they perfume. You better pray. You better pray so you don't lose heart. Let me tell you, life is real. And that's why Solomon said, keep your heart with all diligence. And one way to keep your heart, young folk, is you have to pray all I ain't been on calendar to pray since last March, but you still need to have a productive prayer life. Psalm 119. That's some good teaching. I mean, that's like satisfying. Psalm 119, last, last verse. Last main verse. Y'all ready? Verse 11. If we're going to guard our heart, notice what David said. Your word have I hid or hidden in my, in my heart. Why, David? That I might not sin against you. See, if we're going to make right choices or guard our heart, we have to hide the word in our heart. Most of the mistakes and mess-ups that I've made in my life is because I let the word slip. I did not hide the word in my heart. And so I got to messing up. I got to sin. But when I learned how to guard my heart and say, you know what? I got to put the word in my heart. I got to hide it there. I got to make sure I don't allow anything 
to take this word out of my heart. I got to deny entry to anything that don't need to be in my heart. That helped me to tighten my life up. That helped me to live the way God desired me to, to live. See, that's what Judas messed up. He didn't hide the word in his heart. The Bible says, then Satan entered his, his heart. And guess what he did? Once Satan entered his heart, he went to sinning. You and I have to guard, guard our heart, young folk. When you hear a word, when God send you a word, you got to put that word. It has to become a part of you. James said we have to hear the word and allow it to be engrafted. It has to be become a part of our thinking, our talking, and our choices. That's when the word is in your, in your heart. It get in your heart, you want to go back to the Canton Spiritual song with my man Harvey. Had a song, it's in my heart. Y'all want to hear a little taste? Maybe later. But, but, but bottom line, you got to have or hide the word in your, in your heart. It's so important. Jesus told a parable to his disciples, young folk. Listen to me. He says, as soon as the word is sown, the preacher gives you a word, three different things are going to come. The devil, temptation, and the cares of life. All of them are going to come to try to take the word out of, our, out of our heart. But when you guard your heart, you deny entry. No, devil, you can't come in and take this word. Temptation, you can't come and take this word. The cares of life, you can't come and take this, this word. You, have to, you and I, we have to keep that word in our mind. We have to talk about the word. You just don't need to give. When the word is hid in your heart, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth going to speak. So when you get to going through financial trials, you ain't going to be like, oh, man, I ain't never got nothing. Man, I'm broke. Man, the struggle is real. You got the wrong thing in your heart. See, if you a giver, if you a tither, and the cares of life start attacking your heart, you're going to be like, hey, I'm a tither. God said he's going to open up the windows of heaven, pull me out, blessing I have not room enough to receive, and rebuke the devourer for my name's sake. So I know I'm just going through a little test right here. He going to work this out together for my, for my good. That's saying you got the word hidden in your, in your heart. With those things that constantly attack you, you're not going to let it, let it get the best of you. you. You're going to deny demons the entry into your heart. See, you can have the Holy Spirit, but demons still influence you. You can be Holy Ghost filled, but demons can attack you because of the word's sake and cause you to make bad or the wrong choices. How many have ever been there before? You'd be like, I know I'm saved. I know I got the Holy Ghost, but why am I doing this right here? Because you didn't guard, guard your heart. Last way we guard our heart, young people, hide the word in your, in your heart. You hear a word like this, you go back, you meditate on it, you speak it over yourself, and when you have the opportunity to make choices, you make choices based upon how you were taught. And that says about you that you are guarding your heart with all, with all diligence. How many understand it? I'm going to stop right there. Let's give God a hand clap for the teaching.